Welcome to the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. I'm Melissa Lieberman, a fellow IC and business coach. On this podcast, I teach you to become a consistently booked independent consultant without becoming a pushy salesperson or working 24 seven. If I can do it, you can too. Listen on to find out how. Welcome to this week's episode. Today we're talking about personal branding for independent consultants. I find this topic to be very commonly misunderstood, misapplied, overlooked by consultants, avoided sometimes by consultants. And so today I want to focus on this because this concept of personal branding can truly be an accelerator and also a very key foundation to your business development process. So I wanna make sure you're not overlooking this as you're running your business and really looking to ramp up, make your business development process more predictable, increase the quality of your pipeline. This topic today of personal branding can be a tool that you use to improve all things about your business development process. It's kind of like the tide lifts all boats. That's how I see personal branding. So that's why I wanted to focus on this for you today. And it can be just the smallest adjustments that you can make that will make a huge difference in the types of clients that you are landing in the difference between clients seeking you out versus clients not knowing you exist and you having to do a lot of the heavy lifting for them to know who you are and bring you on board. So that's why today is so important, foundationally to your business. I want to make sure that we're laying that foundation for you so that you've got a really solid personal brand, so that you're not focusing on what most consultants focus on, which is kind of the top layer of branding, like your website, for example. That's certainly part of branding, but it's really more of a reflection of your brand versus the meat and potatoes of your brand, if you will. So I want to help you today really think about your personal brands, probably in a, in a way you haven't thought about it ever, or at least in a long time, and put this practice into place so that ultimately you're starting to stand out as a consultant and become sought after for what you do. And also so that you avoid spending money prematurely on things like new websites, thinking it's going to create pipeline for you or move the needle. When in fact, what I'll share with you today is we'll make much more of an impact on your business here in the short term. So that's what we're going to be talking about today on episode 101. So fun. We're in the hundreds. Before we get going, I want to share with you a couple of resources actually that are complementary to today's episode. You know how important it is. I emphasize this so often. So many of you tell me I'm listening to you on the weekends when I'm taking a walk or I'm listening to you when I'm driving to a meeting. That's how I consume podcasts also. But I also want to make sure that you're not just consuming this, that you're also putting it into action. And so with that, that's why I always love sharing some complimentary resources in addition to the show notes so that you can go put this into action. So two resources for today. The first is I've written a blog about this personal branding for consultants. And so in addition to today's show notes, you can go find that blog and it'll walk you through so many more details, step-by-steps, things like that, that will complement what I'm sharing with you today. So you can go find that on my website, melissalieberman.com, and then find the resources menu, and then you'll find the blog for independent consultants, and then just scroll down and you'll find uh, personal branding for consultants. I want to thank Jennifer Lemmert, one of my clients. She's been on this podcast before. We'll put the link to her episode in the show notes also, where she and I in the interview touched on personal branding, but it was just a little sliver of so much she had to share. So I wanted to dedicate this episode so much more specifically to personal branding. And Jennifer and I had some time after that interview to talk about all things personal branding. That's part of what she does as a consultant for her corporate clients. And so a lot of the concepts she shared with me are infused into that blog and even into this episode. So shout out to Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, for all of your time. It's always so fun working with you. And then lastly, I will encourage you to go 
take the independent consultants scalability scorecard. This is for you to look at the bigger picture of your business and figure out, you know, what is holding you back from growing? What's holding you back of putting a throttle or a plateau on what it is that you're able to make in terms of revenue, in terms of impact, in terms of you having autonomy. And part of that is personal branding. So go take that independent consultant scalability scorecard if you haven't done so already. It's at IC, the two letters IC for independent consultant, ictoolkit.com. Okay, so with all of that, that gets you the resources that complement today's episode. And now we're gonna dive in. So what is the agenda for today? The agenda is we're going to talk about, first of all, just get on the same page. What is personal branding for consultants? If it's not my website, what is it? What is personal branding for consultants? I'm going to break it down for you into really just a sentence. What is personal branding? And we're going to talk about each element of that definition and how it relates to you and your business. So it gives you really a high level roadmap about how to approach personal branding and helps you to see what is overlooked from that aspect. And then we're going to talk in more detail about what gets in the way. So what is overlooked and in turn, what you want to be focusing on to have an effective, powerful, impactful personal brand. So ultimately people think of you first when they need help with the problems that you solve and the results that you help them achieve. Then I'll share with you the steps to put this personal branding into action for your business. And we'll wrap up with something that I think is definitely worth staying for to the end, which are the five questions to ask yourself so you can refine your personal brand and become that sought after consultant for what you do. And ultimately grease the skids for your business development processes. Okay, let's start out with what is personal branding. Most of us think, as I've alluded to, it's our website or maybe the content that we create incorporated with the headshot that we've taken or had someone take, or the brand photos that we've had someone take for our website, or even how we talk about ourselves, like our elevator pitch or the way we introduce ourselves. Those are commonly thought of as the personal branding elements. What I want to share with you today is that those are really a reflection of your personal brand. And before you get to that reflection of your personal brand, the foundation of your personal brand is who you are, who you want to be as a consultant, what you offer as a consultant, and why you are uniquely positioned to serve your ideal clients as that consultant. So if I were to just very simply summarize what is personal branding for consultants, it's ultimately what you want your ideal clients to seek you out for. So let's break that down. I'll say the sentence again. It's what you want your ideal clients to seek you out for. So let's start with the first part of this sentence. What you want. Your personal brand is about what you want to attract. It's not about the breadth of anything you could do. I guarantee that you are capable of delivering a wide range of types of projects. I know that about you. You're listening to this podcast and you've got a lot of experience and skill. You have a wide range of things you could do. The personal brand is about what it is that you want to be known for, what it is that you want to be sought after for. Not because you think that it's the most realistic or most practical based on where you worked in the past or what MBA you have or any of that. Your personal brand starts with what it is that you want. If you're not building your business around the type of work you want to be doing and the types of clients that you want to be attracting, you're creating something that's setting yourself up for misery. We don't want that. We want you to create, even if you don't think it's realistic, even if you think something else is more practical or more realistic or easier to succeed at, ultimately it's going to burn you out. When you're building your personal brand, focus on what it is that you want to attract. Focus in on your personal brand of what you don't want to attract. 
think about both sides of that coin. What is it that I want to attract? The type of work, the type of clients, the nature of the work, the nature of the way I engage my clients. Think about all of those things. Think about the opposite side of that. What don't you want to attract? You can't be all things to all people, as they say, right? So what is it that you want to be known for? Start there. What is it? If you look out five years from now and your business is wildly successful, what is it that you want to be doing and want to be offering? Also, how do you want to be showing up in the world? Do you want to be kind of more on the uh, buttoned up, very professional sort of end of the spectrum? So for example, working with finance or banking type clients, uh, fintech type clients, do you want to be working in that more kind of formal button down setting? Or do you want more of a startup type vibe where it's much more casual and less linear, you know, in the way that things are delivered and generally approached? Think about as you're building your personal brand, what do you want? That's so important. Don't just default to what you think people want of you. Again, that is not a sustainable business model. Think about what you truly want to attract and start there from a personal branding perspective. Okay, so let's go back to the sentence. Personal branding is what you want your ideal clients to seek you out for. So now the second component of that sentence is the ideal client component. What do they want to see in a consultant? from a tangible perspective and an intangible perspective. What type of consultant would they most relate to? What type of consultant would they feel is most trustworthy? Think about all of that as you're building out your personal brands. If you're wanting to go work with uh, financial or banking type clients in a tangible way, they're probably wanting you to be in some form of more business formal attire in a very you know, tangible way. They might want you to really show all of the structure that you've got and the all the T's crossed and the I's dotted, right? Think about what's important to your ideal clients that you want to attract. What are they looking for and what feels trustworthy and what resonates with them? Both from that tangible, the image that you portray, the way that you describe your services and your processes, and also intangibly. Are they the types of clients who want to? go out for dinners and drinks? Are they more of a, you know, let's hop on a Zoom and be more informal? Like really just thinking about the way your ideal clients think and what's important to them and what's not important to them and marrying up your personal brand to that. And then the third component of the personal brand, so I'll say the sentence again, personal branding is what you want your ideal clients to seek you out for. So the third component to that sentence is seek you out for. Why would these clients seek you out? These ideal clients, why would they seek you out? What is it about your background, your experience, your expertise, the way you describe the client's problems that they have, the language that you use in describing the types of results that you get for your clients? really thinking about it in a way that marries up, again, what you want to attract with what your ideal clients care about and helping them to very clearly see that you're someone who understands their problem and that you're uniquely positioned to help them with their specific set of problems. There are so many consultants out there in the world, whether they're working at a consultancy you know, a big four or by themselves, like we are, you want to be able to think about, you know, I'll use this analogy, that kind of very specific dog whistle, like, what is the specific way that I whistle in my clients, because of the way that I'm showing up, the way that I'm speaking to them, in whatever forum I'm speaking to them in, could be verbally, could be through networking, could be through your LinkedIn profile, or content you create, or even your website. How are you uniquely showing those ideal clients that you are the person that can help them to achieve the goals that they've got and overcome the challenges that they're facing? Why will they seek you out? 
Think about that. And that's that third component of your personal brand. These are the foundational elements. You know, if I were to just summarize what we've been talking about, the foundation of your personal branding is how you see yourself and how you see your clients. It's how you think about yourself. For example, do you think about yourself as a generalist? Do you think about yourself as a jack of all trades? Do you think about and joke about, I do sometimes, I'm a corporate dropout, is funny. You know, at this point, it used to impact my corporate brand or my personal brand. It doesn't anymore. But this is a sentence I hear all the time. I'm just a project manager. You know, when it boils down to it, I'm just a, you know, fill in the blank. It's so important from a foundational perspective of your personal brand to really be cautious and curate how you're thinking about yourself. Because how you're thinking about yourself then influences everything about your personal brand and the way you're portraying yourself to the market. Again, whether you're having a conversation or whether you're writing an email or whether you're updating your LinkedIn profile, the way you're thinking about yourself is then a reflection of whether or not you have a strong, clear, building a sought after brand versus one that's watered down and hesitant and unclear. So hopefully you can see that the way you think about yourself, I'll give you a story. I have a client, she has an incredibly specific type of client that she helps. She has an incredibly specific way that she helps those people. So she had those things, you know, those ideal clients. She had those things in order for herself in her personal branding. Those last couple of parts of the personal branding sentence that I just shared with you. The part that she was missing was the way that she was thinking about herself and needed a lot of cleaning up. That's how we mostly focused on with her coaching, cleaning up that she was not someone who was just start learning to be a consultant, even though her business was you know, maybe only 18 months old, helping her to see that she is the expert in this area, that she is someone that those clients can trust, even though other people might have been doing it longer than she had. Really clearly tipping the scale in her own favor about what it is she has to offer versus worrying about what she doesn't have to offer or how other people are better. So that part of the branding is so important, the way you're thinking about yourself the way you're thinking about who your ideal clients are and why they want to work with you and ultimately why they would choose you to do that work. Those are the foundational elements of your personal brand. And then ultimately what ends up happening is when you've got those set in a very strong, clear foundation, then they just become reflected in the way that you operate every day, the way that you show up in confidently in networking situations or you know, when you're writing all of the different ways that you're interacting in the world as a business person. So that's why that foundational level is so important and almost always overlooked. We, as consultants, oftentimes just focus on the cosmetic side of personal branding. And that's really the last step of the process, getting your house in order as it relates to the way you're thinking about yourself, the way you're thinking about what you want to be known for, the way you're thinking about what your ideal clients care about and don't care about, and ultimately why they would seek you out to do that type of work. When you're very clear on all of that, then it becomes almost automatically the outward reflection, you know, that you're putting out there and the way that you're basically operating on a day-to-day basis. So to put this personal branding concept into action for yourself and your business, you're going to want to get really clear on what you want to be known for. Again, I strongly encourage you to put the fear, like, oh, I don't know if I could be successful doing this. And the self-doubt aside, you know, there are other people who are better than I am at this. I can assure you that almost every independent consultant has these thoughts. It doesn't matter what pedigree you have, what university you've got your MBA from, what program you've got your MBA from, where you worked in the past. I've worked with PhDs and Harvard grads and Cal State grads, all the University of Colorado grads, all the different programs. 
all the different pedigrees. It doesn't matter what the reputation of any of those is. At the end of the day, you are a human. And as a human, it's so common to be thinking about that you're missing something, that what you want to be doing is risky, that other people are better at it. That is so normal. You've got to work on and cultivate and address those underlying fears so that you can put a stake in the ground and say, ultimately, I'm on a little soapbox here. <laughs> ultimately, you want to put the stake on the ground and say, look, I want to be known for this thing. This is what I'm going to center my personal brand around. Also get clear on what resonates with your ideal clients. What do those ideal clients care about and what don't they? Now, listen, I'm not telling you to become a different person or become the, it's not like dating. You don't want to go out there and you think that this other person is amazing and try to become the version of you that that person would like. I always use a lot of dating analogies. I haven't dated in, in ages. So it's very common to think that way, especially, you know, at least when you're younger. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to make you into a different person you don't want to be or it isn't genuine or authentic to you. But really highlighting, look, I want to work in with fintech type clients. And I, you know, I'm going to show up in a way that really resonates with them. I'm going to go get myself some suits. I'm going to have a really buttoned down strategy and process for business development and approach. And that's what I love doing. If that's how you are, you know, what you love doing. And I'm going to show up in that way. I'm going to step up my game. That's what I'm talking about. Don't become someone you don't want to be, but maximize and enhance and elevate who it is that you already want to be into that next level of yourself. And then finally, triangulate what it is that you want and what resonates with your ideal clients so that you can create this personal brand that addresses what you want to be known for what your ideal clients are looking for, and ultimately how you are the right person to solve their problems. So let's wrap up today with those five questions to get you started. Question number one, if I could be known for and sought after for anything I want, the sky is the limit. If you try to put some practicality filter on yourself, set that aside for a moment. If I could be known for and sought after for anything I want, what would it be? Question two, what characteristics resonate most with my ideal clients? Question three, what five words describe the vibe or the energy that I want to exude that makes me feel like the best version of myself and will resonate with those ideal clients? Question four, what pieces of your business development process can you adjust to reflect this new personal brand you're building? I don't even want to say new personal brand. It's just a deeper personal brand. And then question five, what pieces of your delivery approach can you adjust to reflect this deeper personal brand? Get yourself a, a notebook out. Spend some time answering those questions today and then go put that into action in your business so that you're deepening your personal brand. You're feeling more like the version of yourself who is sought after for what you want to be sought after for. If you don't believe it, no one will. And that you're creating that version of yourself that really resonates with your ideal clients. And ultimately, they're seeking you out for what it is that you do and what you offer and how you can help them. So that's what I have for you today. Go put this into action. Be sure to go uh, read that blog that I shared with you. The link is in the show notes. So you can take this to an even deeper level. While you're on my website, you can take this scorecard for uh, scalability, and I will see you again next week. Take care. Thanks for joining me this week on the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business podcast. If you liked today's episode, I have three quick next steps for you. First, click subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to make sure you don't miss future episodes. Next, leave me a review in your podcast app so other independent consultants can find and benefit too. And finally, to put the ideas from today's episode into action, head over to melissalieberman.com for the show notes and more resources to help you grow your consulting practice from your first few projects into a full-fledged business. See you next week.